Welcome everyone to the dark art of differentials. Yes, in this video we're going to be setting up a uh, Salisbury differential here and uh, we're going to be putting a Ashcroft ATB into it. Stick around, could be fun. Right, today we're going to dive into doing um, a Salisbury axle, a Salisbury differential, or a, some people said a, a final drive, to keep them right, keep them happy. I think that must be American. Anyway, um, the reason why we're doing it, as you can probably see here, we've got um, a brand new Ashcroft ATB. Very nice. It's a, it's a lovely piece of kit. And over here we've got the old differential. Well, I already stripped it out. I just wanted to show you all the bits and the tools that you'll need. And you will need tools and equipment. Don't think you can do it with a hammer and chisel. Well, probably some of that's good. But let's have a quick rundown what you need. One of the crucial things that you'll probably need if you're going to work on Salisbury's is a spreader. Don't think you can really pry them in and out with uh, pry bars to do it properly you need a spreader because the simple reason is at the end we're going to talk in inches by the way most of the time because all these were inch sizes but there is a five thousandth of an inch preload on these bearings if you think you're going to hammer them in forget it I don't, <laughs> don't, don't watch stretch the casing just a little bit and then it just pops straight in or pops straight out it's really easy but like I say, you could do it with pry bars, but I'm not recommending that, all right? Now, the tool that we made at JP's was a piece of an inch and a quarter square solid uh, bar using three quarter UNF stud bar, all right? That's, that's what we use. Now, I did weld on some other little brackets that you'll see there later just to make it a bit more stable. Um, that's worked well, very nice. You will also need a height gauge, like these things here are dirt cheap on Amazon, really cheap. And if you notice, the gauge that I'm using, the height gauge I'm using, these are excellent, really, really good, so much more better than uh, this, this old school type. All right, we need two really. The way I'm doing it, we need two. Uh, this is in inches, this is the one we're using for backlash, but if this video goes out well, on Saturday, then I've got a thing coming from Amazon with a smaller one of these, and you'll, you'll see, well, a smaller one of these, sorry, and then you'll see the reason why we use it. Um, when we did the, the last Rover, we, I got JP to make a flat disc, uh, a solid mass, it just a bit of scrap he had on his bench, really, and he undercut it ever so slightly here because the top of the pinion isn't necessarily forced to be round. It might have a little bit of machining in the middle. So you just undercut that. And it is important. Why don't you use a mag mount? Well, the mag mounts, when you take them off, can jar, up, jar your settings and put them out a little bit. So we don't really want that. We want to avoid that. But we're getting better all the time on our equipment. But you'll, you'll see. I've got another one of these diffs to do. So but just a plain ordinary one, not an ATB. So, what, is, what other crucial things do you need? Well, this is where it gets a little bit difficult. A dummy bearing for the pinion is going to save you a lot of time and trouble, and money too, because the shim here are shims are behind the bearing. Now when you punch the bearings out you invariably bang up the shims. I don't mean make them pregnant right like that but you can probably see here on this one where it's got notched. Now it's a bit of a shame really and it's the same on the carrier. The carrier bearings have the shims behind them here and they're a bugger to get out. So this is why we need another thing. Now I know it's starting to get expensive and things like this, but if you really want to do it, you want to do it right. 
If you can remember from a previous video, JP made me some a pair of dummy bearings for the carrier. That's these here. Now you can go on to um, Timkin's site and actually get all the dimensions of this bearing. I know it's a, I know it's a block of steel, but um, absolutely spot on. Like uh, JP ground this to exactly the same dimensions as a brand new Timkin bearing. But also at the same time, he honed this out so it was a sliding fit on the carrier and that is really important because it's going to save you an awful lot of time and trouble. Don't fit the bearings, you know, without finding out what the shims are. And this is the tricky bit. This is why we've overcome the darkness. So that's what you need. You need a couple of them. Uh, you also need a um, collapsible spacer, an oil seal. Don't believe me, it's in there. Now, Bear in mind, the early differentials, Salisbury ones, use pre-TD5 pre used the leather seal and post-TD5 used the rubber seal. The difference is in the flanges at the front, so just be, beware of that. I always like to get both just in case. The leather ones put a lot of resistance on, but what we're going to do is we're going to fit the bearing and, and measure, we're going to fit the pinion and the bearing and we're going to calculate the height of the pinion without a crush sleeve and without an oil, uh, without the oil seal. This is going to make our life a lot, lot easier when we put, when we calculate the preload, all right, and, and measuring the height because we might have to take the pinion in and out several times until we get the exact height. So how are we going to find the exact height? Well, it's another thing you need to get. Um, you can find. The measurements of this on is a height block. You can find the measurements of this on my uh, memory stick, or you can go to Ashcroft's website and search around for transmissions or gearboxes or differentials, and you'll find this height gauge and with the measurements. All right, and if you don't know, email me, and I'll send you a link, and, and you can get it all sorted out. They're quite easy for a machine shop to make. Um, this one, I believe, is for a Salisbury, and this is for the Rover axle. Now, bear in mind, the Rover, although I don't want to go down this road, but the Rover axle has two different settings, all right? 24 spline, 10 spline. Bear that in mind, too. Handy piece of kit if you're going to get into these doing well most of the time. So what else have we got? Shims. You can't get enough shims. Really important because you know you're going to do it on a weekend, not the shimming that is, but you, you know you're going to do this on a weekend, so you need shims for the carrier. This, by the way, is called the carrier, this bit here. So you need shims for the carrier and for the pinion. Now, as I said before, if you're using genuine bearings and, and things like this, you can usually get away with the old shims, like that. Now, if you can't, if they got damaged, you can simply clean them up, put them together, and with a micrometer measure this, and it'll give you a base to work off. Now, sometimes you might get it absolutely spot on, but sometimes you might find it's out a little bit, and I'll tell you for the reason why. Remember somebody had been in this before? I don't want to get too much into this, but this is the pinion. Now, when I first got into this, I noticed in the book it says the markings should be on here for the pinion height. Now this is, this is where we're getting into the dark art because if this is too high or too low it'll make a bad contact pattern on your, on your crown wheel and it'll also make either noise or be too tight or do, or do all sorts of bits and pieces. But what you should notice is this on here it's marked minus two. That's minus two thousand. So what that means is you have to think opposite. This is two thousandths of an inch too low. You have to put it two thousandths of an inch higher to get a perfect thing. Now, I don't know what they've done to this. We won't know, but on the first part of this, when we put this together, we're gonna to have a look. And this is why you need the dummy bearing because you're gonna be pulling things in and out to find out with your height gauge with your uh, height gauge like this, but also 
with the height gauge like this. So we're going to go into detail about that, but not like, you know, boring stuff. It's kind of interesting, really. Another thing you've got to remember about this, and a lot of people will be shouting out too. What can we see there? Can you see on there there's a number? You must not mix and match pinions and uh, crown wheels. This is the crown wheel here. They've got two numbers that match together. They must, must match together. Oh, why is it so important, like me? Well, the thing is, they're all ground. So they're ground together at the factory. So they're in a perfect mesh. And those sort of, you can understand if you've got an oddball one there and it's not ground together, it's going to... Ah, oh, it's not going to be very good, is it? Other thing you need. Micrometer or a decent vernier to measure the th shims. Going to need a puller to pull the oil seal out, seal out, and sometimes they are absolute buggers. All right, um, you're going to need a socket to get the nut off. Preferably a new nut. I haven't got a new nut, but what we can do with this is bash the end over to start make it like a lock nut. But once you get all this talked up, I don't think they're ever going to come off. Uh, where else? Now to get the bearings off. Uh, I've been playing around with some rover differentials recently and I realised, I didn't realise there was two different sizes like uh, holes in the where the carrier is so you need some little plugs like this now I'm going to go down to JP and get him to make some more but they go in here and centralise your puller as you pull these off because these have got to come off these are Chinese bearings, they're going in the bin but we're going to try a little method of trying to get underneath here and pull the bearing off and salvage the the bearing the, the shims. If we can salvage the shims, we're we're on a, a you know we're on a good hiding. We're, we're all right. Also, you'll need pinion bearings front and rear, and also you'll need a couple of carrier bearings. Um, Ashcrofts do have. The best prices for bearings. I've never seen anybody beat Ashcrofts for bearing prices. So Ashcrofts don't, they sell the ATB but they, I'm not sure if they do a kit for them. I, I think they might do. They, when I spoke to Dave, well when I emailed Dave a, a couple of weeks ago, they don't really have anything to do with Salisbury axles apart from selling the the diffs, they don't have any information or parts kits, I don't think. So just go and have a look. But for bearings, they have the best prices. If not, LR Direct, uh, but get genuine bearings. I really, really stress to get genuine ones. Chinese ones, probably all right, but we might be messing about with shimming. I, I really can't say, because I don't use them. What else have we got? Well, I think that's about it, really. Plenty of brake cleaner and plenty of paper towel and make sure everything's clean before you start. But I think we've covered about all the bits and pieces that you need. I look, I'm, I, I've sort of shied away from doing this for a long, many years um, because I couldn't get my head around all the maths. But with little tools like this, you'll see how easy it is. You will see how easy it is and how you come up with the calculations. It's kind of fun. So, stick around. We'll be back.